The Asus ROG Phone 3 was recently released and one of its biggest selling points is its extremely fluid 144Hz display, which allows you to view your smartphone screen or play supported games at 144 frames per second. 144Hz seems to be the highest phone refresh rate that we would be seeing this year, however with a little workaround you can enable a 160Hz option on the ROG Phone 3, the highest I have ever seen in a smartphone. This information was first identified by XDA developers and does have a slight risk factor to it. You simply have to use a tool called Android Debug Bridge on your PC. This could very well become an option for everyone that owns a ROG Phone 3 with a future software update since the 160Hz option seems to already be rooted into the phone's framework. Until that happens, feel free to use the link in the description down below, but do so at your own risk. Now let's go ahead and find out if there is much of a difference. This is Technic and without further ado, let's go! The 160Hz option is said to be a bit unstable at times, but I haven't noticed any issues at all in the past week of testing it out. We have the 60Hz panel all the way on the left, as opposed to the 160 all the way on the right, and filling the gap in the middle is 90, 120, and 144. I must let you guys know that this footage was indeed recorded at 240 frames per second at 1080p resolution using an iPhone 11 Pro Max, and I have slowed things down in the clip in order to go extremely slow so that you guys can see the difference. We're starting off with some scrolling, effects over here when scrolling through your app drawer and now moving on to Instagram. As you can see, when we go slower, it's more about the ghosting that is happening. Yes, you might see some extra ghosting to the phones on the right hand side, but that is because you are seeing more frames on the actual screen at that given time per that second. So you're seeing 160 frames on your screen per second all the way on the right. A hundred less of that is all the way on the left with the standard 60 that you would see on something such as an iPhone. Now we're moving on to a UFO vertical scrolling text effect over here. And as you can see, when we slow down, there is a bit of ghosting happening on the right hand side. But once again, you're seeing a lot more frames happen on the screen. I guess if you were to take it from this standpoint, it would be more so how it actually feels than what it actually looks like in slow motion. I'm just showing you guys in slow motion what it looks like. So it can kind of give you an idea of what it would feel like in reality. But in all honesty, you would have to go into the store and feel it for yourself. 160 hertz is extremely buttery smooth compared to 60 hertz but then again 120 and 144 are as well even 90 isn't that bad as opposed to the 60 hertz refresh rate i definitely think it is a must in smartphones today to have a higher refresh rate panel how much isn't really a big determining factor for me if you can get a great phone with a 90 hertz display i think that is a perfect sweet spot now we're doing a regular ufo ghosting testing over here and as you can see now we're seeing less ghosting on the right hand side because this is an actual ghosting test so you can see a lot more frames happening there. Now we're moving on to a fluidity test. I'll leave this app in the description down below for you guys to go ahead and download. It is a lot of fun to tweak around with, but we have 60 all the way on the left, 160 all the way on the right, and you can just see how much more fluid 160 is. But then again, 120 and 144 seem to be just as fluid as 160. So far, I'm not really convinced of this 160 option, and maybe Asus weren't really that convinced either, and that is why they left it out of the ROG Phone 3. 144 hertz, in my opinion, just sounds sounds better. It has a bit of a ring to it and people know that it won't be draining an absolute ton of battery life even though it just might. Moving on to games over here, you're looking at Trials Frontier and we are doing a couple somersaults in the air with a motorcycle. You can see that on the right hand side we are doing a lot more rotations on the bike itself as opposed to all the way on the left hand side. It increases per each refresh rate panel that you see here from 60 all the way to 160. I think where you're really going to see the difference here is in gaming though once again 160 and 144 seems to be pretty similar but the jump from 120 to 144 now seems greater so it seems like going for the 144 hertz display is a better option than trying to enable 160 or maybe going for a 160 hertz display smartphone in 2021 if there are such things going forward which i'm pretty sure there will be since it seems like the tech is already there i would just like to see 160 hertz at 4k that would be absolutely incredible smooth and great looking but as you can see over here slowing this clip down a hell of a lot you can see that you're getting a lot more frames per second with the 160 and the 144 even more than the 120 but of course the 60 is really lagging behind there all the way on the left hand side when running around in a first person shooter game here this is indeed bullet force if you guys haven't seen it on my channel before i have loads of tests including this game no frames per second cap over here so we are hitting that 160 hertz barrier i'll let you guys know about the fps fluctuations after this little clip over here and as you guys can see once again look at the scenery around the gun not really the weapon itself but you can see how many more frames are showing 
every time the guy takes a step within the game. And it really makes for a very fluid experience when playing an FPS game such as Bullet Force, more so than what it actually looks like. It really feels incredible. And yes, you are getting that wonderful number game, 160 hertz, but can it run at 160? Well, it was fluctuating a bit there between 100 and 160. So I guess it's not really feasible right now on the chipsets that we have at the current moment, even with the incredible Snapdragon 865 plus powered ROG Phone 3. And once again, there aren't really many games that support 144 hertz, let alone 160. Guys, this is Technic and I'll see you in the next one.